Hey everybody, this is Jake at QAD. Today, we're going to walk you through our different models of air arrest and talk about some of the differences between those models. And then we're also going to show you how to correctly install and time our new integrated rest on a Matthews VXR. All of our models of Ultra Rest, from the most affordable Hunter model up to our Micro Adjust MXT model, all share some key features. For example, they all drop away fast enough for every bow on the market. Secondly, they all have the full containment feature, where when you lock the rest up to the 80 degree capture position, your arrow is fully contained between the capture bar and the launcher floor. So whether you're spot and stock hunting for elk or climbing into a tree stand, you know your arrow is not going anywhere. While they do all share some features, as you move up the line to higher end rests, they do come with additional features. For example, when you jump up to our LD model rest, it does have the lockdown technology, which prevents any possibility of a bounce back situation. And it also comes with our full lifetime warranty. You jump up to the HDX model, has all the same features as the Hunter and the LD, but it's also lighter and quieter. Um, again, comes with our industry-leading lifetime warranty. Once you move up to the MXT rest, again, has all the same features as the previous models, but has micro-adjust knobs. Each time you click this knob, it moves the rest 1.9 thousandths of an inch to the left or right or up or down. Um, this becomes huge when trying to make precise adjustments in uh, walk-back tuning or French tuning or even gap tuning broadheads. So the MXT is for the serious archer who demands the best and needs more precise adjustments. So all of the rests we've talked about so far are mounted the same way and the same way air arrests have always been mounted. With mounting bolt through a mounting block and screwed into the side, the burger button hole on the riser of the bow. But what if there was a better way to mount a rest to a bow? Wouldn't we want to switch and, and mount rests this newer, better way? Well, there is a better way and we found it. Our new integrated mounting system is the future of how arrow rests will be attached to bows. No more mounting bolt, no more mounting block. The integrate is a seamless integration between the riser and the rest. It's making it the most secure mounting method available. It's two times stronger with its dual clamp technology, 60% lighter than other micro adjust rests on the market, and is also has an auto level technology where it cannot be tilted or twisted or pivoted, it is always level to the back of your riser due to the auto level technology and the integrated mounting system. So the first step to installing an integrated rest is to remove this outer shield. You can use the included Allen wrench to loosen the screw and the shield will come right off. Now you have access to a smaller Allen screw, which you need to loosen enough to be able to fit this clamp over this dovetail cut into the back of the riser. Once you have that clamp opened up enough, you can go ahead and put the rest around the dovetail. and start to tighten this little screw back up. Now, usually a good place to start is by aligning that white arrow on the clamp up with the notch on the riser of the bow. You might still have to make a few small adjustments after that, but that's usually a very good starting point. Second note is you do not have to crank down very hard on this small Allen screw. See, I'm only using the small end of this Allen wrench to turn with does not have to be cranked down on because it's also going to be held on with your outer shield. So you can now put the shield back on and 
and tighten the larger Allen screw. I'm not going to snug it all the way up yet because I still want to be able to make adjustments with my micro adjust knob. And then once we're done, we'll snug this up. All right, so the next step is putting the cable clamp on timing cable of the rest and the downward bus cable of the bow. Put both strings through their individual slots. Then tighten this screw a little bit. Again, you're not going to crank down on it yet because I still want this timing cable to be able to slip a little bit as we draw the bow back. All right, the next step is to time the rest. What we mean when we talk about the timing of the rest is the amount of tension on this timing cable. So how we're gonna do that is by drawing the bow back and letting this cable essentially set itself. So, you should be able to see as I draw, the launcher fork will come from its 80 degree capture position all the way to the full upright 90 degrees and stop. All right, so that should be the right amount tension on that cable. Now we can just tighten our screw down. And the rest should be timed. Um, a good way to check that is again to draw the bow back and make sure that this launcher comes all the way up to 90 degrees and stops. Now sometimes people will set it up and time it going entirely by these white lines. Sometimes that is not the best way to time the rest. Uh, if the lines line up, but the launcher is not coming all the way up to 90, it likely does not have enough tension to correctly consistently drop. If that is the case, and that's what you're experiencing, I would suggest adding a little bit more tension to your timing cable until the rest does come all the way up to 90 degrees and stop at or before the end of your draw. So, we'll draw the bow back again, see if we've got the timing right, See if it comes all the way up. There. Perfect. So now our rest is timed. You can cut the end of the timing cable off, fuse it, or whatever you want to do. And uh, move on to paper tuning. Should be ready to shoot.